is quite upward. So today we will determine blood urea level in a human blood sample. Blood urea is one of the nitrogenous waste material or nitrogenous waste substance that has to be expelled out from the body and the main source for this expulsion is through the kidneys. As it is a nitrogenous waste, so the main source of nitrogen is protein. So protein breakdown or catabolism in the body is the main reason for synthesis of urea or for production of urea. Now, the protein for this urea synthesis is obtained from two sources. One is called endogenous source and the other one is called exogenous source. Endogenous source means the proteins which are there within the body itself. And for this purpose, muscles are the main source. So it is mainly the muscle protein which is broken down in our body. But fortunately, most of the muscle protein which is broken down to form the amino acids, these amino acids mostly they are recycled, reutilized. Protein is broken down, amino acids are formed. But again, these amino acids are used to prepare new protein. So as a result, from the endogenous source, the urea formation is very small. Very small percentage of urea is formed from the endogenous source. The major source or major contribution for the urea is from exogenous source and for exogenous source the protein is obtained from our diet. Whatever the protein that we take in the form of diet, whether meat or beef or pulses or whatever may be, it is the major contributor for the urea Out of the urea, which is excreted out from the body, 95% urea, it is excreted in the urine. And 5% remaining, it is excreted in the fecal matter or in the stool. So this is the reason that the excretion of the urea, it is dependent highly on the activity or on the function of the kidney. The production of the urea, although it is secreted, excreted out through the kidneys and it is considered as an excretive function of the kidney, but the production of urea or the factory for urea is not kidneys. The factory or the production site for urea is liver. So liver is the site where urea is synthesized 
from the nitrogen which is released as a result of breakdown of proteins. So that's why we can consider liver as one of the excretory organ as well. Although it is not expelling out something, but it is synthesizing the substance which has to be expelled out. Therefore, it is also considered as one of the excretory organs. Or in functions of the urine, you can include excretory function as well as it is synthesizing urine. Normally, in spite of excretion in the urine and feces, normally our blood also contains some urea. And this urea level is highly variable, somewhere between 10 to 50 milligram per dn. So this is considered to be the normal range of urea in our blood. 10 to 50 milligram per day. This normal range of urea, it varies according to different conditions. For example, this normal range, it varies according to the protein content of the diet. So those people who are diet contains mainly protein substances, they will have a higher urea level as compared to those people who are containing vegetables and food. So vegetarians will have a low urea level than the protein taker or the meat eaters, you can see. Similarly, the urea level also varies with age. Younger age people will have lesser urea level and urea level will keep on increasing with the increasing age. Because with increasing age, the functional level of the kidney will reduce. Where is your left foot? Why not use it? So second factor is the age. Third factor is the difference of gender. Males will have a higher urea level than females because of more muscle mass. Third, fourthly, the urea level also varies depending upon the fluid intake. The higher the fluid intake, the lesser will be the urea level. The lesser the fluid intake, the higher will be the urea level. And finally, the urea level will decrease during pregnancy. Why? Because during pregnancy, the blood volume of the lady will increase and it will produce a dilution effect a dilution effect. During pregnancy, urea level gets decreased because the pregnant ladies have more blood volume. And this higher blood volume will produce a dilution effect. So all these are physiological conditions where the urea level will fluctuate, vary. But there are certain pathological conditions as well where the blood urea level will increase. These conditions 
which are pathological or disease conditions, we can categorize them in three groups. Group one called pre-renal conditions. Group two, renal conditions. And group three, post-renal conditions. Pre-renal condition means those conditions which are directly not involving the kidney, but they are somewhere else in the body, but they are affecting the urea level. And the most common among these is nausea, sorry, vomiting and diarrhea. Vomiting and diarrhea, it will cause loss of fluid from the body and therefore the urea level become high. Similarly, burns will also cause loss of fluid from the body and therefore the urea level will increase. Number two, renal causes means directly those conditions which are involving the kidney and affecting its function. Like glomerulonephritis, nephrotic syndrome, or pyelonephritis, or any other congenital problem of the kidney, whatever. Thirdly, the post-renal. Post-renal means conditions in the urinary tract, but outside the kidney. Maybe in ureter, maybe in urinary bladder, maybe in urethra. And these conditions, they are usually obstructive conditions, which are obstructing the urinary outflow. Like stones in the ureter or urinary bladder, Number two, enlarged prostate gland. And number three, stricture urethra. Stricture, S-T-R-I-C-T-U-R-E. Stricture urethra means, stricture means narrowing. This is the normal size. If it becomes like this, we call it stricture. So if the urethra will become narrow, Naturally, the passage of urine or outflow of the urine will be obstructed and this may cause increase in urea level. Structure Now, whatever may be the reason, whenever the urea level will exceed the normal range, 50 is the normal range, maximum, it becomes 80, it becomes 100, 200, 250, 130. So whenever it will be higher than the normal range, the earliest sign and symptom will be patient will start feeling nausea and vomiting. So in all those cases, Wherever you will not found a proper reason for nausea vomiting, you should to immediately check for the urea level. Because many of the patients with high urea level, they present with nausea vomiting. Number two, as the urea level keep on increasing, the urea is water soluble. So easily diffuse and dissolve everywhere in all tissues. So that's why it will start affecting the mental alertness, the consciousness level. And the patient's consciousness level will go on decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. And thirdly, usually the high urea patients they complain of itching. All the time keep on itching the body like this. 
this condition where the blood urea level is higher than the normal the condition is called uremia kidney failure uremia high blood urea level due to any reason in front of you that is collection of the blood sample and then extracting the plasma from it so this yellowish color transparent part is the plasma and below the residual part dark color it is all the blood cells so we finish this first part second part is to prepare the working solution the kit for determining urea is containing solution a and solution b we have to mix these two solutions a and b in equal volume to prepare the working solution to prepare the working solution equal volume of a and b has to be mixed thirdly preparation of the samples for this step we will take test tube t for the test and test tube s for the standard in both of these two test tubes first add 2 ml working solution 2 ml working solution here 2 ml working solution here secondly in the test tube t add 10 microliters serum or plasma here in our case plasma here in the test tube as add 10 microliters is standard urea solution from where we will get standard urea solution the company along with the reagents also provide us a standard urea solution in this small bottle so from this small bottle a standard urea solution we will take 10 microliters and add in the test tube s mix here mix here also and then incubate at 37 degree centigrade for 10 minutes here also so incubate both test tube t and s at 37 degree centigrade for 10 minutes incubate any putting in the water bath at a particular temperature this process is called incubation so remember incubation means putting the samples in the water bath at a particular temperature for certain time after 10 minutes incubation we will take out the test tubes and transfer 1 ml solution from t in a cubit 
and 1 ml solution from S in another cubit. So take two cubits, one for T and one for S, and transfer 1 ml solution from T in one and from S in the other. And then record your absorbance. Record absorbance at 580 nanometer wavelength. 580. So for 580, we will use UV. So 580 nanometer. To go somewhere. So record absorbance at 580 nanometer wavelength. After recording the absorbance of the T and the S, now you come for the last step that is calculate urea milligram per dl using formula absorbance of T divided by absorbance of S multiplied by concentration of standard. And concentration of standard here is 80 milligram per dl. So using formula, absorbance of T divided by absorbance of S multiplied by concentration of standard, which is 80, you will get the urea level in your sample in milligram per dl. Once you calculate the urea level milligram, maybe 10 or 15 or 20 or 25, whatever. Now you can change. You can convert this value of urea from milligram per dl to millimoles per liter using another formula. So urea level. Millimoles per liter is equal to result of milligram per dl. Whatever the result you have for milligram per dl, twenty, twenty-five, eighteen, fifteen, whatever. Take that result and divide this result by six point zero one. So dividing the result of milligram per dl. By 6.01, whatever the value you collect, this will be the level in millimoles per liter. Millimoles per liter. Okay. So remember two formulas: absorbance of T divided by absorbance of S multiplied by concentration of standard. For determining in milligram per dl, and for converting it to millimole per liter, result of milligram per dl divided by 6.01, it will give you the result in millimoles per liter. Not necessarily, but if you want, because at some places the results. Are shown in some labs in milligram per dl, but some labs show in millimoles per liter. So, if you are aware of this formula, and the report is in millimoles per liter, you can immediately convert it into milligram per liter. Suppose the report is given in millimoles per liter, how you can convert it in milligram? Multiply by multiplying with same number six point zero one. Very easy. Okay. Right. Now divide yourself. 